What do you get when you combine the mainstreaming of prejudice and hatred of white people with mediocre identity-based thinking dressed up in fantasy overtones like a Terry Potter and then presented to you as if it's something new and something rather interesting? Well, you get this newest movie that's coming out in 2024 called The American Society of Magical Negroes, which is basically everything I, I just said and more. And, and before we watch a little bit of the trailer of this movie, we're not going to watch the whole thing. I won't subject you good people to that nonsense. We have to really ask ourselves, how have we gotten into a point in our society where it is completely and utterly okay in academia, in entertainment, in, in other parts of society, in politics, to even in philosophy, which is basically my field. My field is both politics and philosophy and news. How have we gotten to a point in society where it is okay to demonize one group of people in those fields? Indeed, many may say, well, it already was okay in some instance, Christian, back in the Jim Crow era. And that may be true, but guess what? Does that mean that we want to perpetuate the same ills for other people? And yet this is what the cathedral, this is what the orthodoxy of our society is pushing us towards. Complete and utter demoniza demonization of people on the basis of their skin color. And, and really, when you have these affections in society, the people trying to push this stuff, and then that, that's bad enough. But then they try to hijack fiction and fantasy to push their nonsense as well. That's worse. Because fiction and fantasy is a gateway to a world that is not like ours. That may actually be able to tell us some things about our world that we may be able to apply to our own lives. Some of the great fiction writers that have whose works have been turned into movies... Like the great C.S. Lewis, one of my favorite philosophers and fiction writers, and the great J.R.R. Tolkien, who created one of my favorite series, is, uh, Lord of the Rings, and created one of the most beautiful poetic works of fantasy fiction ever written, the Silmarillion. These individuals were able to paint such a vastly different world using things from our world, which allows us to reflect on the human condition, on society, and on so many different things which if we heed their advice, can lead us to a more enriching life, a more enriching society. And yet, this modern, contemporary, social justice, political posturing that has snaked its way through the entertainment industry takes that same principle and spoils it, just like everything else it touches, spoils it, and instead wields fiction as a tool for its own political purposes. It's a shame. It's unfortunate, but it's really reflective of where we are in our society right now, and the fact that it is accepted, and it's mainstream, and it's deemed okay, and not only is it deemed okay, it's deemed brave and stunning, it's deemed virtuous, is a sign of how standards can deteriorate over time in this world if they are not held accountable and refined by men of reason, men of sound mind. When the mass of men whose minds are bound by mediocre ideas maintain institutional power, you should expect the products of that power to also be mediocre. I've ranted enough about all of this. Let's actually see a little bit of this trailer here where you can actually explicitly see them attacking white people and doing all, all, all the kind of things. I know you can feel their discomfort, Aaron. Watching you walk through a room full of white people was the most painful thing I've ever seen. Welcome to the American Society of magical Negroes. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Shark. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. Okay, what's the most dangerous animal on the planet? More dangerous than a shark, one of the most fearsome creatures in all the sea? According to what you just saw, it's white people. When they feel uncomfortable. Now, I could say 10,000 things about this statement. I can call it racist, which it is. I could call it irrational, which it is. I could be outraged, which I am. I could do all kinds of things. But none of those things are going to actually help any of you understand the phenomenon going on here in our society. And what we do on this channel is we try to push the contours of our own thinking, expand them so we can have a richer view of the world. What you just witnessed there is the result of the institutional slash structural view of man. What do I mean? Well, let's go all the way back to the... 18th century, the Enlightenment period, particularly Enlightenment France. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, 
who is a pretty prominent philosopher. Many of you may not know who he is, but he's a pretty prominent philosopher who helped develop the social contract theory and other kind of, of pillars of political philosophy. He had this idea that man was born pure in nature, but when he went into society, he was everywhere in chains. The idea was that man is molded and malleable by the forces in society he interacts with. Okay, well this idea translated itself over time into several different theories and political movements, most notably progressivism, that have had a big impact on the West. For example, the entire modus operandi of the progressive education system, the Prussian education system, which, in, which came into America in 1835, and then matured in America by the early 20th century, 1900s, in the form of Woodrow Wilson's education programs and people like Cubberley and other these kind of folks that really made American education centralized and government focused and society focused and not focused on the individual student. The entire emphasis was that you can mold the person to be the kind of person you want them to be. Well, if you can mold the person to be the kind of person you want them to be, follow me here, then you can define someone's worth in terms of the institutions in society that some part of them is associated with. Essentially, you can define in, in the worldview of these people, you can define a white person's worth in terms of how the idea of a white person is believed to be in society. When they talk about white people here, they're talking about the abstract idea of a white person, not an actual white person, and they're applying a label to that which then basically allows them to justify their prejudice. It's the institutional view of man, that man is the result of social processes, the result of social norms, and not an actual self-contained individual. It's a rejection of individualism, and it snakes its way. Here's how this happens. Here's how ideas progress. An idea is birthed. The idea that hits the minds of men after it's birthed. It's then taken and applied in some way, or it's applied whether it be practically or whether it be just cognitively. And then a little bit after that, throughout the ages, as the idea is passed along, it'll be distilled. It'll be distilled down to its most basic and probably oftentimes most worst form, which is why we have to do the still man. Because most of the time, the ideas that you hear come out of the mouths of men are not refined. They are just bare bones and terrible. So you got to still man. You got to make them the best they can and tear, it, can tear the strongest argument down. And at that point, that's when they become accepted. Because most people would not accept or even really get the Rousseauian view of man. But when you say that white folks are sensitive, and we, they're, they are most of the time sensitive, and that plays into all these institutional things, then that means that if someone is already prejudiced towards white people, or someone already has sensibility in that regard, you just still the deal for them. It's epistemic, Mental manipulation, rhetorical manipulation, abuse of language to the highest degree. This is what leftism does. This is what, 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 what leftism does. It abuses ideas and language and the mechanisms of understanding for its own purposes. Let's continue. White people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day. Because the happier they are, the safer we are. The happier they are, the safer we are. And white discomfort produces a lot of things every day. This kind of identity-based thinking, which is, by the way, quite popular, well, it itself precedes a lot of incorrect notions about people in society. And that itself precedes a lot of incorrect postures towards people in society. And that itself precedes more division. If you talk about procession and all that kind of stuff, well, <laughs> this kind of thinking precedes a lot of bad things. Forget anyone in particular with their race or whatever. But we have to also think about this. The entire premise of this movie are people that have magic, right? Supernational powers that are able to affect the universe, using it solely to make a whole race of people feel better on the basis of a racist and outwardly racist sentiment. How would you feel if someone said, if it was like a white movie, the society of magical white people who were trying to keep black people less violent and more happy by being less violent, by serving them. We would say that's quite racist and now obscene, right? But in this case, it's basically the same, the same exact thing. There's no peep about it. There's no condemnation. 
because there is this odd thinking that says that black people are oppressed, they are the minority, and therefore the minority has the ability, and not only the ability, but the right, this is what Franz Fanon would say, to push back against the majority in a way of their choosing. And that no matter what the minority does, they will always be considered to be oppressed, to be, to be, to be violent or to be rebellious or whatever, and we should accept that. Right? It's the reduction of norms and meaning to subjective preferences which has preceded a lot of the cultural chaos and tyranny we have seen in our world, which basically has preceded a lot of the riots we saw with BLM and the George Floyd riots, which basically has preceded a lot of the behavior, a lot of the programs of affirmative action that we've seen in our society. It's this manipulation and this uh, upturning, this usurpation of meaning on the basis of how one simply feels. And what is the result of abstract thinking when it comes to race? It's very simple, it's prejudice. It's no white parties in, in, in Boston. It's affirmative action, the discrimination of certain high achievers on the basis of something they had nothing to do with. It is a un unmerited hatred on the basis of something that someone can't, under control, under, can't control. It's the assignment of value and truth to subjective experiences that in all reality may not mean anything beyond your own anecdotal experience and your own anecdotal window. It's a lot of things, but it's also fundamentally and most importantly, a fundamental rejection and abuse of reality for one's own deluded world and sense of how the world works. That's what it is. And if a man cannot exist in reality, he cannot really exist coherently at all. Now the rest of this trailer, my friends, is simply a big rom-com whatever. And that's not what I'm really into. I'm not really into romantic comedies. It doesn't do much for me. But what I think is more important is the premise of this film, the thing said, and some of the kind of vile ideas that have made this kind of entertainment acceptable. Some may say, Christian, you're simply tilting at windmills here, and you're simply uh, making a mountain out of a, mo uh, a molehill, and you're simply using your knowledge to draw up conclusions that are not there. That's wrong. I'm simply, I have an understanding of where these ideas come from, and I'm using my understanding of those ideas to help all of you see, and hopefully push a back against them, in a way that will be meaningful and in a way that will hopefully discourage this kind of cultural nonsense in the future. When you denigrate an entire group of people, you should not expect, you should expect that a portion of that group of people may not be in the right mind. And a, another portion of that group of people may be in the right mind, but they may have a certain sentiment. They may feel defensive. And that defensive sentiment may result in them adopting a form of racial consciousness. Many people who are white, or in any other race really, have adopted a racial consciousness due to all of the racism they have been facing. And when a group adopts a racial consciousness, they will begin to consider themselves in the same way that you consider, you, you consider them, except in a positive way. Whereas this movie may consider white people to be the aggressors and the villains need to be kept back through magical promises. The white person may consider themselves as the victim who needs to take pride in who he is as a white person and assert that against these aggressive forces. Both viewpoints are get the conclusion wrong. Both viewpoints are dangerous. But one of those viewpoints is understandable. And that's the latter viewpoint. And it's very scary when we get to a point in our society where the latter viewpoint becomes more understandable and more not acceptable, but just more, you can sympathize with it more than the former one. We should not see ourselves as products of who we are physiologically, whether that be our sexualities or our race or whatever. We should see ourselves as fundamentally individuals with our own spiritual values and spiritual traits. As a spiritual entity, really, that's what man is, with the ability to reason and walk in this earth and do good or do bad or whatever, with the ability of free will. The human condition is so rich, it is so powerful, it is so good, but to reduce it to so mediocre social notions is to an ultimately, in a sense, reject who you are as a human being. And if you reject who you are, how can you hope to have a healthy relationship with society? How can you hope to have a healthy relationship with yourself? How can you hope to have anything that will meaningfully progress your life or help you get closer to the truth? You can't. For a lot of people... They already believe they have the truth. 
They already believe that they reached the truth, and their truth is what matters. But the problem is, reality doesn't really care about our truths, whatever that means. Reality cares about the truth, and it will remind you painfully of that, of that truth when necessary. It's my view, my friends, that if the culture continues to devolve in this way, where anti-white prejudice, collective grouping, identity-based thinking, mediocre thinking, mediocre art masquerading as cinematography becomes more acceptable. We're going to see a backlash of sorts that will be fundamentally deteriorative for social cohesion. We're going to see a rise of ideas that are fundamentally anti-American and fundamentally anti-human, fundamentally irrational. And most importantly, we're going to see people begin to group themselves and divide themselves on the basis of group-based lines, and that cannot lead to anything good. Not at all. It'll be an us versus them free-for-all. There's a, another option, though. We can begin to embrace sound concepts, to embrace good art that helps us think more universally about things and not so tribalistically. And most importantly, we can simply say to ourselves, but we will hold ourselves to a higher standard, one that is healthy, one that is fruitful, and one that does not involve the unmitigated hatred of group people just for who they are. It's very easy to fall into the trap of tribalism, racial tribalism, or any other kind of tribalism. It's very easy, and it's much harder to resist it. But it's far more worth it, in my opinion. Because if you truly want to have a good life, if you truly want to and just take from the river of life in the best way, if you truly want to interact in society the best, then you have to. You have to reject some of these ideas that are easy to embrace, but ultimately painful and harmful to the soul. My friends, like this video, comment on this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, donate to me if you want to keep my message coming. If you want to support me, be sure to go to my Patreon, PayPal, Locals, all of it's in the comment section down below. Join my Discord if you want to. If you want more philosophical and pensive content, then you can just subscribe as well. I talk about politics and society, all that kind of stuff. My friends, I love you guys so much. Stay pensive. Well, like that comes later. Study history. Study philosophy. Remain convicted. Consume good art, not poor art. And most importantly, stay pensive. Bye, everyone.